our kind eternal father we thank you we bless you again for this moment we appreciate you for your grace that has been with us since the day began but we also read in your word where you told us that at the evening time a lot of people with varying problems and diseases came unto you and they all went back home with joy Father, may this be our portion tonight in Jesus' name. All our expectations, we believe they have already been met. May testimony follow in Jesus' name. We pray for the little word that will be spoken this evening. May it mix with faith in our hearts. Give us more understanding. Give us the grace to see the light of the hour. And Lord, when we have seen it, May it energize us to be better persons in the name of Jesus Christ. We remember we are other servants and saints of God that gathered tonight. May you bless all of us with your presence. Every satanic influence of any kind that may be trying to spy our liberty by the authority of the word of God, we cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that your spirit reign supreme and take control at this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because you have done it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you saints. It's always a privilege to stand in your front. Because you are the purchase of God. By the grace of God we will not spend so much time. But I will ask you to listen with undivided attention. By the grace of God, we want to look at some old prophecies that are making the events of today clearer to us. Amen. Amen. So before we sit down, let's quickly turn our Bibles. The book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 10. I will read verse 8 to 10. The book of Genesis from verse 8 to verse 10. You know, the prophet told us that everything started in Genesis. Amen. I read. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erek, and Akkad, and Kalni, in the land of Shina. May the Lord have blessings to the reading of his holy word. You can please be seated. Once again, you are welcome to the presence of the Lord. Uh, for the few minutes that will be here, pay your undivided attention. This evening we'll be talking about Jezebel religion. Jezebel religion. But we are going to look at You see that the word uh, Babylon, we find it in Genesis and then also in the book of Revelation. It was introduced in Genesis. And then the judgment came in Revelation. So uh, the prophet told us that Nimrod was the one who built Babylon. So, when the Bible told us that the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel. And Babel is still Babylon. But Nimrod, he said, a mighty hunter before God. The prophet told us that the Hebrew meaning is a mighty hunter against the Lord. It was against God. It was the son of Ham. Recall that after the flood, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I think the two were good, but Abraham told us that the serpent seed survived the flood through Ham. So Ham was the father of Cush, and Cush was the father of Nimrod. So this Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one on the earth. And what was the first thing he did? He called for confederacy. As we are hearing today, I'm sure many of you are aware, there is something called the New World Order. It's going on in the background. That's how Nimrod also started. He called everybody. What are we even 
doing. Let's come together. Let's become one. Recall the prophet, uh, the sermon preached by the prophet, uniting time and sign. That's why today we have association of barbers, of tailors, of every kind of thing. Because it's winding up to the same thing. So Nimrod called everybody. They are, fortunately for them, they are speaking just one language. And he told them that, what's the point? Why do we need to be praying to some God far away? Let's just do something and we can reach him immediately. And he was able to convince the old Lord. And they were with one accord. Until God had to look down and say, My, if I didn't do something about these people, they are going to accomplish their mission. Praise the Lord. So you see, if we have unity of purpose, our goal becomes achievable. That's why the Bible told us. You know, we used to joke that the only car in the Bible was under accord. Because the disciples were always in one accord. Amen. <laughs> so once they are in one accord, their prayers must be answered. And the same thing applies to us. If we can unite and speak to God about a particular thing, let's be guaranteed that that request will be granted. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Nimrod, using God's principle, he was able to unite the populace, all of them, and they started building. And the beginning of that kingdom, the Bible told us, was Babel. If you go to Genesis, um, I can read through quickly so that we save the time. Genesis 11, verse 9. It said, when Bible said, the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel. Where is Babel? If you look at Genesis 11, 9, it says, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So that Babel, it means in a way confusion. Okay, it's on the board. So that thing, you know, prophet made us to know that it was Nimrod that was responsible. And if you look at where we read, it shows us that his kingdom began with Babel. But when they were scattered, he never stopped because he was motivated. There is something in him different from others. That's why if you are a carrier of God's seed, no devil can suppress you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Anytime the light shines forth, your seed must bring forth. Yeah. We have had uh, testimonies of people who went to buy Akara. And then they wrapped the Akara with uh, one or two pages of the Salmon book. And that was what brought them to the message. And people have the Salmon book box in their house. Even we have people that live close to us, but they never come to the church. There is something different in everybody. The truth is, the seed of God, once the light shines, it must come alive. Hallelujah. So Nimrod, despite the fact that God scattered, confounded the language, he didn't stop. Now, I read uh, East Loves to Babylon. In there, the fellow, he was a writer, he was trying to show us how Nimrod, the even prophet said it, we read it, Nimrod was the one that began idol worship. The worship of objects. He started it. And then even the, from the archaeological diggings, some coins that they found that belonged to that era, era showed the space as a god to those people. In that Islam to Babylon, that one was saying that um, Nimrod's mother, Semiramis, also had a relationship with Nimrod. So what we see like mother and son. What later became Mary, mother of God and Jesus now. It didn't start today. It started with Nimrod. You know, him and his mother, they have relationship and they, that history told us that they had a son. They called Talmos and all that. And they became God. They deified them. So they were worshipping them. Rabbi, I think let me quickly read the um, prophet says something about it. He said, um, in the sermon, um, I will restore unto you, says the Lord, 540809 a paragraph 15 there. He says here, yeah, Now, to you, my Catholic friends, shook hands with one coming in just a few moments ago. I'm not saying this as a slam to your church. 
just a minute till we get through with the Protestants and you find out, our, you find out whether they are or not. Notice, but they, in there, the Kali church came in existence in the book of Genesis. Are you following? Nimrod established the first Catholic church, which was the first church. It was called the gates of heaven, or paradise, or first Babylon, and then was later called confusion. But Nimrod, the son of Am, established that Babylonian kingdom. And in there, idol worship was set up for the first time. He went out and got other cities, and they paid tribute to Babylon. Just the very picture of the thing today, perfectly. Now, Babylon appears in the first of the Bible, Genesis. Babylon appears in the center of the Bible again. Then Babylon appears in the revelation at the end of it. See, starts in Genesis, comes through the Bible, goes over into Revelation. Amen. So you can see that this Nimrod guy is not just an ordinary guy. We are going to see, we quickly go through the dragon, the beast, and then you see how it is connected. Now, so Nimrod was established that he started Babylonian religion. Kali church is actually a religion on its own. Although they masquerade as a Christian church. If they are a Christian church, why did they kill 68 million Christians? It's not really a Christian church. It's a religion on its own with its focus, objectives, and aims. Amen. Now, but the prophet told us that Babylon appears at the beginning. We are discussing the beginning right in the middle and then at the end. In the middle, it was about Daniel. If you recall, Daniel um, interpreted one dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had in which a very tall image with the head of gold, I think chest of silver, and some parts of brass, and then iron. Now, this kingdom, when, Daniel, when the, the king saw that vision, it was so urgent. The problem was the king forgot the dream. He couldn't remember the dream. But the dream was troubling to him. It was really a big deal for him. So what did he do? He called all the astrologers and the magicians and all of them. And he said, you people, show me this dream and its interpretation. And then the magicians told him that, King, it's never so done. You've got to tell us the dream. And then we will tell you the interpretation. And the king couldn't have any of that. He said, it's going to kill all of them. If they will not show him his dream and the interpretation, they still told him that, look, anybody who can do that must be a god. That ordinary people like them cannot do that. And the king commanded that they should be killed. So that message came to Daniel. And Daniel asked, why the urgency? And God granted him favor. He said they should give them some moments. Hallelujah. And he called the other church members the way we do. If there is an issue, we call ourselves and pray. He said, Hebrew told us that he that comes to God must believe that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So when you go to praying, you must believe that your prayer will be answered. That is the first principle. Because God cannot fail. Hallelujah. If you ask in faith, brethren, you must receive. Jesus himself clearly told us that everyone that asketh receiveth. And everyone that knocks, the door must be open. But James, I believe, reminded us that some people do ask and they don't receive because they ask amiss. So let's ask correctly. Let's do so in faith and we've got to testify. Yeah. Hallelujah. So Daniel called his other church member and said, Let's pray. This is an issue. It concerns us. Just like the issue of governance and things concern all of us. When they lock up the church, we couldn't worship. So we need to pray so that God's will must always prevail. So that while we are still on this earth, we can have our peaceable life. Yeah. Amen. So we should try not to curse them. Because if we curse them and they behave like mad people, it will still affect us. 
Abby? So let's pray for them. Sometimes they are disgusting, but we have to pray for them. Amen. So Daniel called his fellows and they prayed. And before you know it, God brought both the dream and his interpretation. And Daniel, quickly, in a hurry, they brought him before the king. And then he stood before the king and told the king his dream. And then he told him the interpretation. And the king was amazed. And they don't forget, they've told the king that only gods can do that. And what did the king do? He worshipped Daniel. And he asked that they should offer sacrifice to him. And you know the king's word there, you cannot say no. Even Daniel cannot say no. Yeah, because they told him it's only a God that does that. And that's how God granted Daniel favor there. And then in that image, Daniel told the king, you are the head of gold. That's the Babylonian kingdom. Appearing again in the middle of the Bible. Which shows he has a very key significance. And then the other, the Medes and Persia, followed by the Greek, and then by the Roman. You know? The, the Greeks, they gave us a lot of mythology. I'm sure children, they will know Thor, Thor, Amma, all those kind of... They gave a lot of gods. You know? But the Romans, they are known for administration and road building. Greeks, philosophy. And on and on. But of them... The richest is Babylonia. They have absolute authority. Today now, they are questioning Trump. He's fighting for his life. He's going to Supreme Court and Supreme and the courts they are turning down his request. But in Babylonia Kingdom, nobody can turn down the request of Nebuchadnezzar except somebody who is who is a dead man already. So they are more powerful then than today. Today they have constitutional checks and balances. The king can say, I want this, he cannot get it. But over there, is, you cannot query, cannot be queried, cannot be questioned. Whatever it says is absolute. That's why the, it, it's the head of gold. He's the best and the richest of them. Then followed by our own time, which is a mixture of iron and clay, strength and weakness. Of all the things, I think iron is stronger than gold. But the mixture of clay makes it very weak. We, if we have the time, we'll be able to get there. Let me read somewhere in Daniel. Now, under this Daniel, there was further revelation of how Babylonian kingdom will be, will be organized. I just want to take a little excerpt there. That's Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. That is long way back. But it's very relevant today. It's, it's a prophecy of the past that is making an event clear today. Daniel 8, 23. You can write them down. And in the later time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. In verse 37 of Daniel 11, just one verse there, Daniel 11, he said, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of woman, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now, anybody who is a Bible reader, and a watcher of current events know who this refers to. Because in the Catholic Church, they don't regard the desire of women. Nothing like that. They celibacy. So this thing is written in the book of Daniel. But you know what God told Daniel? He said, still love those things. They are not for your time. You are just a beloved fellow. That's why you are shown this is there for the end time. And we are now at the end time. 
So there's nothing you are seeing today that the Bible have not discussed already. It's just for us that God will give us more eyes of understanding so that we can see how it relates to our time. So there's already in this Babylonian kingdom something about who the Pope will be. Like we have been saying that, okay, America will go broke. The reason for that is just so that they can be tied to the apron string of Roman Catholic. There is nothing more. After that, he said they will prosper. You know, Laodicea Church Age says they are rich. That's what they said to God. They are rich and they lack nothing. So this Bible verse is going to tie in with that. It's not as if they will become poor. Once they bring their new world order and everything, everything will look well. It will look like those guys are making moves. But there is a purpose. Hallelujah. Let's go gradually. So we have seen how Babel or Babylonian started with Nimrod. This Nimrod was son of Ham, who was the survivor of serpent seed through the flood. And then, we, how do we know? Jesus said, You know them by their fruits. By what he was doing, we know who he was. He the first person to set up idolatry. He was the hunter against God. And he was successful. That's why today many times we wonder. I think if you go to um, Psalm 37, he too wondered. Why did the wicked, why did they become big, rich, and successful? Psalm 37 also has. And he also had the answer. You can check it when you get him. So you see that many times, these people of Cain, they are always very successful. And I think last week we were told about the children of Cain too. Lamech, Juba, they started music and the rest of them. They are always very successful in their craft. Because they are earthly. They have nothing up there. Everything for them ends here. Hallelujah. But we, we have another one eternal. Amen. That's the difference. All their inheritance or heritage starts and ends on the earth. And we know the earth will be renovated. Peter, Hallelujah. Peter told us that it will melt with fervent heat. Amen. So there is nothing to put everything here. Children of Cain, they put all their hopes here, but it will be born with fire. And that's, amen. that's why we are better off. But Jesus himself told us we should lay our treasures where? Up there. We are moat and thieves should not get there. And that's what we are doing every day. And that's what is more important than the physical things. Of course, we are flesh and we have to operate in this um, element. So we do what we have to do correctly. And God will bless the work of our hands. He told us that. That it is a blessing of God that makes us rich without adding sorrow. That's why we don't believe in compromises. We don't, you don't need to sell your birthright in order to get anything. Because your God has already given it to you. Amen. Amen. All you have to do is to wait your time. And do your bit. And God has already done his part. Amen. So we saw clearly that Nimrod, he did all these things. And then he was deified. They turned him to a deity. He became a god that they worship. Because of course he was a great man. He was able to unite the whole world. The Pope is doing that now. They want to unite the entire religion. They want to do the same pattern. Devil is just devil. The behavior is always the same. It might use a different package, but the fruits are the same. So, hallelujah. So we can see the mission of Pope today is to unite everybody. He has brought in the gay, I mean, LGBTQ people. Say, oh, we cannot kill them, they should be brought in, because it needs everybody. He's a nimrod of the new order. Amen. So he did that, and then became a god. Abraham told us, we read it, that he was the first person that started idol worship. He brought in polytheism. That is called many gods. We, we are monotheists. We believe in only one god. But the rest of the world, they are polytheists. Three gods, idol, every kind of thing. You know, this thing started with Nimrod. Uh -huh. And so, we now saw that Babylon was right in the middle of the Bible. And then what did he do? They were very prosperous. And then Bible now forecast 
or it foretell what they will do in future. That there will be a king. Bible describes, just the way Revelation told us, Daniel also talked about it. That great city, which Abraham helped us to examine that there are, I think, uh, two cities that have seven mountains. One is uh, Mississippi or somewhere, and then Vatican. And Mississippi has no spiritual significance. So we get back to Vatican, which has seven mountains, which the Bible called the seven heads in the book of Revelation. And then kings will be arising there. One time he said, that beast, there are also three players in this matter. We have the dragon. Then we have the beast. And then we have a lamb with two horns. So I, I think, uh, let me just give you the Bible verses for all of them. So that we, we save our time. So the dragon, Bible told us, that's the devil himself. The, the dragon was the devil. So I think that's in Revelation chapter 12. We are in, it talk about the dragon, which is Satan the devil. He fought with Michael and they cast him down to the earth. The place was not found for him. And then his mission became, it was after the woman with the seed. I will know the woman usually church. Huh. So he wanted to destroy the woman so that she will not give back to the seed. Because the seed is going to destroy him. So that dragon was Satan. The devil Bible clearly stated that. Then uh, the beast was this Babylon or Jezebel. I, I wrote all those things out just a while. I'll find them. So that's um, okay. So that's a revelation to have talked about the dragon, which is Satan the devil. Now we have the beast. It was the dragon that empowered the beast. The beast itself was empowered by the dragon. And he said people should worship him. Because you know the devil, Abraham told us the devil doesn't like to be seen for who he is. So always note that carefully. That devil he wants to masquerade as somebody else. Just like I think the preacher in the morning told us, somebody is doing a bad thing. You can, I don't, I don't, maybe in the Western world, they do. You cannot see a woman who is a prostitute and come and announce that I'm a prostitute. Though they are losing shame today, they are doing that now. But normally, any arm robber will not come and say I'm an arm robber. That my profession is arm robbery. He would rather say I'm a businessman. Is it not? Because the devil doesn't want to be known for who he is. Hallelujah. And so when you are doing something that you need to masquerade, check it. Use the thinking man's filter. Is this thing correct? Because why am I hiding it? You are working on the computer, and when somebody enters the room, you put a screensaver. Why are you hiding it? Even if it's a confidential, maybe you are working on money or some things. Say, okay, oh, I'm working on this. I'm a hey. But when you quickly cover like that, it shows that you are not proud of your action. Brethren, there is time for repentance. Let's correct our ways. That's why we are hearing the word day in, day out. So that we can be better and better every day. It's not for condemnation, no. Because we have passed from death unto life. There is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Nothing. The devil cannot condemn us. He's out of the picture. Christ has paid the price. Hallelujah. We remember the story of uh, Daniel Kuri, I believe. But Abraham said it was a dream. He had a dream that he was, he, he got to heaven. And so when he got to the gate, the angel searched for his name and the name cannot be found. And he said, look, you must, there must be some mistake somewhere. I am Daniel Kuri. I'm an evangelist. My name has got to be there. The angel said, sorry sir, your name is not here. He said, but you have one option. You can appeal. He said, well, I've got to appeal. Because I'm a great evangelist. My name has got to be there. And so he said, he approached a place. And then as he was going there, the light was getting bigger and brighter. And brighter and bigger. And then there was pin drop silence. And he said, a voice spoke from the light. He said, Daniel Kure, do you approach my throne 
to appeal your case? He said, yes. Daniel Kuri, have you ever told lies before? He said, all the little, little lies that you thought were nothing, they became magnified. And I said, wow, I've told a lie. Second question, have you ever stolen before? He said, look again. <laughs> a whole evangel is stolen. Those two things should not be found in the same sentence. But I found out that little, little picks and drop here, he has stolen. I said, I have stolen. And then, the voice wanted to pronounce judgment. I said, just before that moment, he had the sweetest voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And that is the same voice that is still working for us today. Bible told us is the high priest of our confession. And it's an high priest that can be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Because he was tempted like us, he's able to succor you. He's able to succor me. Amen. That's why he came in flesh. So that I can be tempted, they can know our pains. No wonder Psalms wrote about it. I think 103. He said he remembered our frame. That we are dust. That's why he doesn't always chide with us. Nor keep his anger forever. He said, if God will mark iniquity, nobody will stand. But you are standing because of the grace of God. And brethren, you keep standing. Because ours is eternal life. Praise the Lord. So, when uh, he had that sweet voice, he said, yes, he should be condemned. But when he was here on earth, he stood for me. And I'm going to stand for him here. Hallelujah. I think the perfect work has been done already. We should just partake of it. Let's, don't let the devil box us to a corner and say, oh, this is not meant for you. That, who is the devil to tell you what is meant for you? Bible told me that the devil is a liar from the beginning. So why are you going to believe him? Believe the word. Yes. Hallelujah. What does the word say about you? Jesus said, for God so loved the world. The whole world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, you are among the whosoever now. Hallelujah. And so don't let any devil tell you otherwise. Tell him he's a liar. And we don't need lies in the word of God. Hallelujah. So this dragon was cast down. And then he empowered the beast. The beast is that great Babylon. Bible also described her as Jezebel. Mother Alot, Mystery Babylon. That's the same name. Babylon. He empowered her. Because the Bible refers to church as a she. Just like we are the bride of Christ. The dragon empowered her. And what did the lamb? Then the Bible told her, I think Revelation 13, talk about both the beast and the lamb with two ones. When the devil has empowered, the dragon has empowered the beast, everybody worshiping. And Bible said he had a wound, a very fatal wound, but he healed. But Abraham told us that, that that wound was the wound when Roman Rome was in in uh, pagan. You know the world changed. You know paganism, everything was done away with, and said so look like he's dead, but he realized something. I'm, I will read somewhere where he quickly feels paganism with the word of God and then he healed. And today now, most people have been to Catholic church, you cannot class it as a church of Christianity. Because like um, we've had, they will do communion, perhaps in the morning. The priest will drink all the wine and give the bread to the people. And that's not what Christ did. Never. Also, they collect money from people that they have lost loved ones. And they told them, that they are able to pray for their loved ones from hell through purgatory into heaven. That's, I think, is, is called necromancy. Something about the dead. That has nothing to do with the Bible at all. Jesus told us, let the dead bury their dead. The works of the dead follow after. Nothing to be done again. Case closed. But they said, no, 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 no. Jesus was wrong. We can do it for us. That was a quote. Brother Abraham said, one person, they've been collecting money from that guy. Every time they say, now, the hand has passed from purgatory to heaven. It remains one leg. When the guy got tired of me, he said, sorry, which leg is that? 
He said, it's the right leg. Ah, that leg, you shouldn't go with him to heaven. That leg used to trouble him when he was, leave the leg alone, I'm not paying you again. It's all lies. Amen. There's nothing like that in the Bible. So most of they are also the ones celebrating Mary, mother of God. Pray for us. Bible told us there is only one mediator between man and God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the name, the man Jesus. Not any Mary. Mary has to be in the upper room to receive the Holy Ghost for her to be saved. But because they are from Nimrod, is if you Google it, a worship of mother and son. You see, every time, their own Mary is always carrying Jesus. Their Jesus has never grown up till now. He's still a baby. Because that is in line with their idolatry. It has nothing to do with the Bible. We have explained before that Mary was never the mother of God. Jesus established that himself. I believe when he was around 12 years of age, and then the parents, you know, assumption, they've gone far, three days journey, and they found out it wasn't with them. But what was he doing? He was disputing with elders in the church. Three days, 12 year old boy, do you ask what was he eating? How was he being sustained? That's God Almighty there. Amen. Amen. And Mary came back. Ah, he said, You this boy, me and your father, we have been looking at just, hey, but Abraham said the word corrects the error. <laughs> Sorry there, you are contradicting your testimony. You are not my father, you are not my mother. See, those who are listening to me, they are my father and mother. So, right already in the Bible, it has been established that Mary was never the mother of Christ. Today, we have better understanding about uh, surrogacy. I'm sure I think uh, one of those Kim Kardashian, she did that. She couldn't carry the baby. It's a baby anyway, because, I mean, both her husband and herself, they now put it in another woman. And they paid her for that job. That was who Mary was. She was only a surrogate mother, an incubator for Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot speak plainly, but we know that before a woman can conceive, he must receive something from the man. And then she must also produce an egg. But this egg cannot be produced except their sensation. Are we saying God romance Mary? Obviously not. Bible told us, Gabriel, he said, that thing of the Holy Ghost is in you. So, Jesus Christ already formed. Bible told us, a body as thou prepare for me. That body form was put inside Mary for incubation purposes only. There was no contribution of Mary or Joseph in the whole matter. That's why Mary was never the mother of Jesus. And Jesus would deny that all the time. So, but Catholic Church, because that aligned with their Nimrod worship, they say Mary is the mother of God. We are coming. Now, let me quickly read something here that the prophet said. Okay, now. God has a provided way. 560108, paragraph 63 for your reference. He's talking about um, Abraham here. He said his father was an idol worshipper. That's Abraham. Come down to the land of Chaldea and the city of Or, coming out of Babylon, where they had worshipped roots of trees. And they had some woman up there, and she was supposed to be some goddess and everything. I'm talking about Mary, mother of God. Built by Nimrod. Are you following? This idea has been established by Nimrod. So Catholic Church is propagating it. Because it's the same thing. They are Babylon. And there is where idol worship first was established. In Babylon. And the people were scattered. And Babylon brought them all into one group. Like one great head. Or one great organization. I read a Pagamian Church Age. No, it's not in paragraph. Pagamian, she said, you can search with Nimrod. He said, now, up to this time, 
I have not brought out that point in history that I promised to cover. That is the intermingling of religion of Nimrod and the Christian religion. There was a mixture. Papa and pagan Rome. All the while, they've been doing the pagan stuff. But when they saw Constantine, I mean, that in the second suit, it was what brought up to this. They now realize that, look, idolatry is no more fashionable. That was when it was wounded. People are now talking about God. God, everybody today, they are born again Christian. Everybody is it's fashionable today to be a Christian. Not so in the Dark Ages. So the Babylonian religion, masquerading as a Catholic church, now realize if we don't change, you either adapt or you go into extinction. They now marry all their paganism. That's why I say all their idols. If you're able to go into the, there's a place they call catacombs. It's in Vatican. That's why they, it's an archive. Nobody, I think maybe there are only two or three people that can access it. It contains all their detailed files. So that's how all the secret and things are written there. And that's why they always swear out of secrecy. All those popes and they cannot say nothing. They must never. Because there's a lot of secrets hidden there. So this, that is religion of Nimrod was married to Christianity and it is called today Catholic Church. So you will recall that Atalus fled from Babylon to Pagamos and set up his kingdom. This Atalus was like a, a kind of pope. Now, outside Roman Empire, it flourished over the years, nurtured by the God of this world. A succession of priest kings followed Atalus until the reign of Atalus III. When, for reasons known only to the sovereignty of God, he willed the kingdom to Rome. He joined his own kingdom. It's their priests, right? They ran away from Rome. But this king, he now decided to marry that their kingdom back to Rome. Now, the title passed on to the following emperors until the time of Maximus III, who refused it. That's Pontius Maximus. According to, because he now combined religious power and political power. That's why they call him Pontius Maximus. He has politics in his hand, he has religion in his hand. Only one person. So, according to Stephen's history, it was then that the Pope took the headship the Emperor rejected, and today there is still a Pontiff in the world. He is truly Pontiff Maximus. We are talking about the marrying of idolatry, that is Nimrod's uh, religion, with Christianity. And that's what you see today as Catholic. It didn't start today. Don't forget, in Revelation 12, it says the dragon, there is a power behind this thing. It's not just some brilliant men who are planning things. It's beyond that. We saw in Revelation 12 and 13 that that dragon, that Satan, gave power to the beast. He inspired it. So all the things that I think uh, Brother Lee was telling us, our Catholic Church, they are the biggest evangelists. Their evangelism is not like, let's do crusade. You never see them. Until maybe charismatic stuff. But that's not their real evangelism. They do their evangelism from cradle to grave. In your schools, Catholic school, our lady deans, our agonized dad, those are the way they evangelize. Also through advance all those business schools, all those things that we know, the ones, top, top ones, they have investment there. So what do they do? They have their teaching. So all those are embedded in the school curriculum. So much so that anybody who has gone through their course, you won't know it, she won't know it, but you are subconsciously a Catholic. When there is a discussion or a problem to be solved, if God is not in you, you are going to solve it the Catholic way. That's the evangelism. So that now everybody is thinking Catholic. So when the time comes for the unity of everything, everybody will support it. They won't find resistance only among us. It is not that I say, eh, devil, we don't want. But everybody will say, oh, it's a good idea. Let's be united. 
And you know, where we read in Daniel, he mentioned that by peace, he will destroy many. Do you remember? I know he's always talking about peace in our world today. If not Pope, he's always a man of peace. And that's the Bible saying, using that peace, it will destroy many. So we should be careful. It has been foretold, so we know. When it goes everywhere, especially the Pope John Paul, he will kiss the ground and give them peace. Oh, they say man of peace. Oh, holy man. They don't know. That's devil incarnate. Hallelujah. Establishing his kingdom the more. Amen. So, in here, let me finish. He said, now, we have a, a pope took the airship of the emperor, the emperor rejected. And today, there is still a pontiff in the world. He is truly pontiff Maximus. He wears a triple crown and resides in Rome. And in Revelation 17, God does not any longer refer to Pagamos as Satan's seat. Nor does he say that is where Satan dwells. No. The throne room is no longer in Pagamos. But it is mystery Babylon. Amen. It is not in Babylon. Not physical Iran. I think Iran is bordering Babylon now. Or Iraq. He said, but in mystery. This one is mystery. Not open. You go to, they say go to Babylon. You go to Iraq or Iran. But this one is mystery. Not popularly known. It's only the eyes of revelation. And we are privileged today that we know that. He said, but in mystery Babylon, it is in a city on seven hills. I've described that before. Its head is Antichrist. For he has usurped the position of Christ, who alone is mediator and who alone can forgive sin. Yes, Pontiff Maximus is with us today. Amen. So I, I'm trying to show us how the worship of Nimrod, how it m was married with what we call Christian religion. And the outcome of that is what we call Catholic. Catholic means universal. You know, for something that is acceptable to all. And the word of God cannot be acceptable to all. It's only for a chosen few. That's why when Jesus saw that the crowd, they are becoming too many. What did he do? He said, except you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you have no part in me. And they were offended. And they left. And some remained. Jesus said, ah, what are you still waiting for? Bye bye. Then, God spoke through Peter. <laughs> Hallelujah. I told you, once the seed of God is there, you cannot do otherwise. He said, unto whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Amen. And that's why we are with him today. Even though there is so much appeal. You know, Bible told us again. He said, those whose name are not written in the book of Lamb, they will do what? They will wander after the beast. That's why the whole world today, even though it was a fusion of numerous religion and Christianity, everybody is wondering after. Even the Muslim, they love them. If you ask a Muslim, you say, oh, Catholic Church is a good Christian. Because they all have the same thing. We won't read the story. We don't know how true. They said, Queen Amina, somebody that married uh, Muhammad, was a Catholic nun. That it was Catholic Church that set up that religion for a purpose. And so you can see that they have similarities. Whereas the Muslim call it Tezbiu. I think the Catholic call it Rosary. But it does the same job. They will be murmuring something. Yeah, the same purpose. So that's how you see that they have similarities. So it's a fusion of idolatry and Christianity. And God is not in the business of fusion. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word of God separates. Amen. Amen. That's what it does. It doesn't fuse error and good. He removes the error and stakes the good. Amen. 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 So we are seeing that from the trail of serpent. Right from Genesis, Nimrod has been growing. But it's not just Nimrod. That's, um, it's not that Nimrod he was a brilliant person that has a lot of strategy. No. It was Satan in him. 
If you see that, you see it in Revelation 12 and 13, where the dragon, the Bible describes him as Satan, he empowered the beast. You know? So it was an empowerment. And that's why you see Carlitos are successful. Not because they have all the most brilliant human beings. No, there is an inspiration behind it. And God is watching. Because God has already spoken about it. There is a judgment. The judgment was proclaimed in Revelation 14. And then I believe it's carried out in Revelation 17. God already knows. It's just like um, maybe you have a cockroach. Maybe in this big place. It's going from, it's running around, doing everything. Anytime you want, you just step on it. Abby? That's how the devil is to God. He's just allowing him to do, to stretch his muscles and do all his power and, and think he's succeeding. But it's not. There's a bigger plan. He said, we are in him before the foundation of the world. He said, no devil can pluck us out of his hand. He just wanted the devil to stretch his muscle. Just like they did in time of Job. You know? God called him, Satan, come now, where have you been? He said, I've been going to and fro. You must not be restless. As a Christian. You know? Jumping up and down. That's not behavior of a Christian. You know? We are called into rest both spiritually and physically. So if you are jumping up and down, flirting, calm down. Talk to yourself. Christians don't do that. You know? Amen. So he would say he was going to and fro from the soil. And said, okay, 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 great. That's your behavior. Have you considered my servant Job? There's no one like him. He was perfect. You know, some people in the group, uh, WhatsApp group, that plan, they say, ah, nobody's perfect. You know, they say it all the time. I say, you people, what are you even saying? And who told you that nobody's perfect? Ah, they say, yeah, show me who is perfect. So I now show them the book of Job, that God himself said Job was perfect. Ah, they, now, they didn't say anything again. So, so, so I said, you should stop destroying some a requirement. I say, what is perfection? I cannot tell you. But if God says somebody is perfect, what do we say? It's perfect. I say, what you should seek is to seek what does God want. What is God's requirement? Once you meet it, it is his own business to say you are perfect. Amen. Amen. Don't make it your job to say, nobody is perfect. Who send you? Leave it alone now. Some say, you know, there is, it's current to them. Oh, nobody's perfect. We are trying. Christians are imperfect. They are only, it's not in the word of God. So, aspire to perfection. Yeah. Amen. Once you have the spirit of God, you won't get there in one day. But as you continue, you will get there. Because it's a promise. Hallelujah. So, he said, Job is perfect. You know, ah, Satan said, why won't he be perfect? You have given him everything. Upon that, you even protected him. Say, so I will not be. But God wants to show Job that. Job, I mean, Satan, Job is not serving because of what I can give him. That's Pentecostalism today. They serve God for miracles. Oh, see vision for us. But they are not ready to tow the line of the world. We don't serve God for that. We serve him because we love him. What else will you do? Are you going to go to Biapalo? Or what? There is no such desire in us. All things have passed away. We just have to serve Him. Hallelujah. Not for any pecuniary gain or anything. But yet He promised us that we do those things for us. So devil thought Job was a modern day Pentecostal that was worshipping God because of gain. He said, hey, let me touch him. You will see, we will cut you to your face. And God said, go ahead. And He gave him boundary. Of course, he try. It will always pass, but God has everything in control. Yeah. Hallelujah! Before that conversation, God knew that He wanted to double the resources of Job, Amen. and He was looking for a way to do it. And the devil became a willing tool. Today, maybe you are facing some challenges, brethren. You will overcome. Yeah. This is not a sweet talk. It is a pattern we found in the Bible. And you can rest on it. Because when God brings trials to you, Abraham said, God have confidence in you. That's the way it did for Job. 
He had confidence that this job will not disappoint me. And he called the devil, come and test him. And so, God has, remember, when you are facing fiery trials, there is somebody having confidence in you. You should celebrate. Peter told us we should rejoice when we face fiery trials. Because he walk at patience. There is something to work out. God knows it. Amen. Amen. But the devil is always short-sighted. He, he sees the... Me- ah, let me punish this one. Let me remove him from one of God's children. When God has the bigger picture. And so he jumped to work. Started messing up everything. The children die. All the resources gone. Everything. And Job say, Blessed be the name of God. The Lord gave it. The Lord take it away. Ah! I'm sure that thing eat the devil like a thunderbolt. But will he appreciate you? They said, Otaini um, Kung That is, your enemy can never kill a big game. Even if they kill a big game, it's not that small one. Because it's enemy, you never appreciate. That's jo- uh, uh, Satan. When God called him, I mean, you have done everything, what happens? Uh, it's because you edge him round. A man will give anything for his life. Let me touch him. She been a resources I touch. He no budge. Let me touch himself. Look, I said, go ahead. Go and touch him. Don't touch his life anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why there is a quotation. I say, it gives us consolation. That we do not own our destiny. But God owns our destiny. And nothing can ever go wrong. Romans 8. Everything works together for good for those that love God. Even though presently looks horrible, at the end of the day it's for your good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brethren, you will testify. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. In this battle, the devil is the loser. Yeah. He's just flexing his muscles. He's going to flex it. We are going to watch and then when we are tired, we move on. He cannot stop our progress. He can only enhance it. He will take us faster to our victory. Amen. Amen. And so he touched him and touched and touched. He's not satisfied. He went to speak through the wife's mouth. Job cannot be bothered. And Job, he was a curse God and die. That's all he wanted. You know, that was the mission of Satan. So all the time, when something comes to you, thinking man, Satan, whose purpose will this serve? The wife should have checked. Ah, if my husband caused God and die, where will he go? Will he go to hell? All this are for No. But she, Job said she spoke like foolish woman. She wasn't foolish. She was just used at a moment of time. The devil does that. When he cannot get you, he gets to people who are close to you. That's how Abraham said, the person, they are not the devil. They are not your enemy. So don't see individuals as your enemy. No, they are not the one. Amen. There is something behind. And that's what you should target. If Job had targeted his wife, maybe we'll have divorced her. But he knew better. He knew there is somebody behind. Hallelujah. That somebody behind, I send you packing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so he did all the effort, no show. But what he did, what happened to Job? Job has been longing. If you read Job, he said, Oh, a tree has more hope. When you cut down a tree, what will happen? It will grow again. But a man, once he dies, it's over. That is when he preached to his congregation, he doesn't have the mystery. He doesn't know that part. What will happen to man when they die? His trial brought that revelation to him. Because I think in Job 19.23 he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Yeah. Oh, even if skin one destroy my flesh, yet in this flesh I will see God. The devil lost. Job got more revelation. Yeah. Amen. That's what will happen to you. When you face trial, you go higher. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so, God also came down and spoke with Job. He began to show him some revelation. Because he said, Job, where were you when the sons of God shouted for joy? Where? Job didn't know. But today we know that we were in him. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
Because we were in him even before the foundation of the world. That's the God we serve. He knows all right in him from the beginning. It's not far-fetched. Look at the Bible. Look at when God has been talking about Pope. Daniel, he talked about him. And yet, there was no Pope. There was no such thing at all. But even the angel told him, these things are for the end time. Not today. So God knows he, show, he can choose to reveal some part to you. Like he did today, he gave us the revelation of the seven thunders. He gave us the seven seals and all those things. So that Abraham said he's there to tie in the loose ends. All those places that people don't know. So they will know them. And if we know so much, they say knowledge is power. We should operate in the IRM. We should not be somebody the devil will be tossing to and fro. For what? He can do what he wants to do, but we know he will not avail to anything. He's just a messenger. Hallelujah. And Job was able to get further insight into who God was and everything and everything. And at the end of the day, what happened? Bible says God blessed Job. He doubled and everybody came back to him. Brethren, who lost? It was Satan. His portion in your life is to lose. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. So when it comes against you, that's a loser. You just stay calm. If you don't know what to do, Sam told us, be still and know that I am God. Yes. Satan, we said we are more than conqueror through him that loved us. So every time he said we are fighting from victory. You are just called. You are ready. You are, you are a winner. They just call. Come and show up. You know that kind of thing. So you are ready one, no? But come and show up. That's what we are doing. We are only showing up, putting up appearances. We should not be sad when we have been tried. No, because we are just putting up appearances. We are already overcome. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm enjoying this. We are more than overcomers. That's what he said. Let's move forward. So, uh, we have shown us how Nimrod worship was fused with Christian religion, which became Roman Catholic Church, which is the beast. Don't forget. That's the beast. And that gave the power to a what? A lamb. A lamb that came from the earth. That's a nation. You see? And the lamb has two horns. Prophet told us his ecclesiastical power and political power. He has a lot of power. Bible said he was able to do um, wonders. What are the wonders? He can rain fire. America can rain fire now. I mean, they rain it on Hiroshima. They rain it on uh, Iraq too. So with all those fire they are showing, people wonder, hey, this nation, greatest democracy. But they have been disgraced now. Sorry, Americans. <laughs> you see, the, somebody said the election was rigged. If it had been Nigeria, what would they have said? They would have sent observers. And uh, do this. I, we are not bold enough to send observers there. <laughs> but you see, everything has been shamed. So, but Bible told us that that lamb, with two on him, was able to do wonders, bringing fire. So all those things, now I use it to force people. Right? What did he do? There was an image. I think it's the book of Revelation 16 there. Image unto the beast. is an image. And then this lamb with two one gave it power. It's, it, it made it alive. Those are part of the wonders. And what is this image? Back to Nimrod. Confederacy. World Council of Churches. Unified religion. That's the image. So the, it's not the beast, but it's the image. What gave you power? United States. The United States did that. Strengthen that image. Say, you people, you must worship it. And they worship it. Bible says, all whose name were not written in the book of Lamb. All of them, they worship him. And Bible now alerted us. Before even they did it, he said, watch. The number of that beast is the number of a man. And he said, six, six, six. This was way before they started. That's why we should believe this word. Amen. Amen. 
And so, Brother said, I went to Calicho. I saw, written behind the throne of Pope, Vicarious Fili Dei. That is, instead of the Son of God, I am. And Bible told us, he did not regard the God of his father or anybody. He is the God. He was against everything. And when you translate that Roman numeral into Arabic, it gives you straight away 666. You know, praise the Lord. And you wonder why people are not seeing it. This thing is just open. And then we had recently that maybe when they, this thing is touching them, they change the writing. They change it to Dux Clarice. That is the clear leader. When you translate it again to Arabic, brethren, guess what? It is still 666. <laughs> you see, you cannot do anything against prophecy. That's why we are not moved by all these uh, fake prophets. That God will show them something that nearly happened but didn't happen. You know? That's not God. Hey, God cannot miss by a second. So we know they are not called of God. So they don't bother us. Brethren, let's appreciate God for revelation. Amen. Amen. In our little corner, he came and sought us. And he showed us this great thing. You know, when we speak a little about these people, we open mouth and say, this thing you are saying is in the Bible. You have not experienced it before. They open my eyes. Are you, is it in the Bible? It's right there. We thank God for revelation. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, I, I need to read the, about this Pope. I will not read it to save our time. I only have a few minutes more. But maybe another time we will have it. We have the time. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. You can note it. Let me. He said, Now we beseech you, brethren. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Who does what? Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. And that is worshipped. If you go back to Daniel that we read, you see it. Daniel 8.23. You will see that he said he doesn't regard the God of his father or anything. He exalts himself. Ha. Huh. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's Vicarious Fili Dei. Instead of the Son of God, just come to me. I will forgive your sin. I am just God. And he can change the Bible. That's why they don't even follow the Bible again. Meanwhile, the Bible told us the word of God is eternal. It cannot change. Even a little G2 must come to pass. But Pope said, don't worry. God is in his church. We do what we like and it is sanctioned. We are talking about Jezebel religion. Many times I don't view Catholic as Christian. I think they have 1.3 billion followers. They have the largest. When you want to divide Christianity, Catholic is one. 1.3 billion of the world. They are Catholic. Even the others that are not card carrying members, their thinking is the Catholic. Except their name is written in the book of God. Because it said in that revelation, it said, All the whole world wandered after him. So you should count yourself lucky today. Amen. Brethren, if God can save your soul, He can heal your body, Amen. He can heal your pulse. He can heal your mind. He can meet your need. Regardless of what it is. Let's believe God. He will do it. Because he has done the greatest thing. Which is the salvation of our soul. Every other thing is secondary. How do I know? 
He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Every other thing, they shall be added. Brethren, whatever your need is, let it come to your mind. And then ask. Because if you don't ask, the principle is you should ask. So, know your need. Don't say, ah, this is too big. Ah, if, is it your need? Begin to ask him. Because say, every other thing, there is no exception, no. Every other thing shall be added. That's the word. And I stand by it. Hallelujah. So in the New Testament, he also established to us that this man of sin is a son of perdition. But brethren, how did the word see him today? He's the holy man. Eh? When he approved gay, everybody, they were shocked. The eh, holy man approved. But his uh, adherents, oh, Pope is right. Those people, they are human beings like us. They should be respected. Because it's Pope that said it. But Bible called him son of perdition. He's a man of sin. And that's who he is. And every, Bible said, every succession of Pope, they go to hell. None, no Pope will be found in heaven. Because, do you know how they choose them? When they go into the conclave, yeah? If they know, I, I think I watched one. Maybe when that one that retired, when he was chosen, I was standing in my bus office to watch it on CNN. If a black smoke come out of the conclave, they've not agreed. It's something like idolatry. It's not even like, oh, we want to choose church officer. It should be open. But no, their own is not. I think they wear some black gown, they go into the conclave, they stay there until the day they choose the Pope. And then every day, black smoke come out. They've not chosen. The day white uh, smoke come out, the whole world will celebrate. It doesn't even concern them. Or they are not Catholic church. But because they are, they are wondering. The Bible says they will wonder. Open mouth and saliva come out. It's already in prophecy. They cannot but wonder. Because names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. That's why Jesus told his disciples. When they came and said, Ah, Jesus... Even demons, they were subject to us. We were healing sick. Everything. He said, hey, 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 that's not the cause of the rejoicing. You rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb books of life. Amen. Tonight, let's rejoice because our name is written. That's why we are not wandering after the beast. Hey, Amen. Let's continue. <laughs> now, this Jezebel religion, but Abraham talk more about Elijah and Jezebel. So I'll quickly do a snippet on that. You know, Jezebel it was the neck that was turning Ahab. In short, she was the controller. That's why I say any woman of iron disposition is a Jezebel. Miss Grill, that should not be found among the saints. Don't forget about the world order. That's not our business. Our own order is the world. Amen. Amen. And the Bible positions the woman. It positions the man. It positions the children. Let's stay in those positions. And once we are there, we are blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we saw that Jezebel, she was the neck controlling Ahab. And then there was Mount Carmel showdown. We know what happened there. And then, after a while, we saw, before even that showdown, God was pissed off with what is going on in Samaria. You know, Samaria was the head, it was the capital. And then he sent the servant to say, You, you are the one troubling Israel. Now, by my word, there shall be no rain nor dew until I call for it. Of course, believe, unbelievers don't believe the word of God. So they don't care. They say, Old crank, what's wrong with this one? Are you the one controlling rain? Last time I checked, we don't even know who your father is. So they didn't believe him. But he has spoken the word. And that word must come to pass. Amen. And so, the, the, the famine began to bite. And no food, no nothing. And they were, hey, well, let me read something here. Said um, is in a Jezebel religion, 610319, paragraph 100. 
He said, when God sends forth a messenger or a message and tells the people and they don't receive it, then he withdraws his servant and sends his plagues. Have it? Famine, death, spiritually speaking, and physically also. You watch for a depression. What is the biggest problem of today? <laughs> Nervousness. Depression. He said, you think you've seen something, you just wait after a while. You haven't seen nothing. You think you are dying for a good spiritual revival, you wait till after a bit. You just wait long and cry to hear the word of God. The Bible said so. There will be famine in the last days, said the prophet. And not for, for bread and water alone, but for the hearing of the true word of God. But that voice will be quiet. In the wilderness, somewhere, eat away. He ordained the ravens, his servants, blessed them birds, his servants. They kept the voice of Elijah alive during the time of his isolation from the church. The ravens brought him flesh and bread at morning, flesh and bread in the evening. And he drank from the little fountain while the rest of them down there were doing without any spiritual food and water. Now, see what happens. He said once the message is given, they don't reject it. They reject it. What will God do? He will keep his servant. History has always repeated itself. See what happens. I will show you two areas. If I read this quote now, you will think it's just today. He said, first, he said, uh, Jezebel and John Pagas, he said, now you see why my voice is going to be stopped pretty soon. That's the prophet telling you that because I have delivered the message, God is going to keep me away. It was stopped. The record told us of his death that that guy, he was a Catholic boy. That, killed, that drove the vehicle that killed him and he was driving with only one dead lamp and then when Billy Paul's car he first of all approached Billy Paul's car but when he noticed that no Abraham he swerved away that was the account and then he now went for the prophet so he was sent and he was a Catholic boy but he said how did God allow that God is sovereign Amen. hallelujah he can do anything that's why I allow a whole Isaiah to be son ascender right in the temple. Do you want to say was he a prophet of God? He was. But Brabham said, don't worry about the undertaker. Worry about the uptaker. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> don't worry about you will die. Because this flesh is not even going to heaven. Uh -huh. It's not included. It's earthly. Does thou art to does thou return. That's for this flesh. It doesn't belong to heaven. That's why it's always fighting you. It's always worrying. He wants to do this and do that. That's why we should be careful. Our sisters, the one time I checked, they said American women, they spent 75% of their income on cosmetics. But today it should be more. Because this thing I'm telling you was 1998. So I'm sure it's more than that today. And this is for a body that will drop hair. So let's be careful. Amen. So I'm talking about history repeating itself. So he said they will soon stop the body. And we see they stopped it. They stopped it four years after. He was spoken in 61 and they stopped. And he already told them, I saw my end in a blast at 56. So he knew. But that's the way God wanted it. Another history that repeated itself, I will read it now, especially uh, marry it with this election that just happened. Paragraph 67 there, 67. You say, and you, precious colored people, you think it's today that I just preached this thing. In the South, how you voted? You know today it was blacks that voted bidding. Sure you know. The percentage of black that voted, they were the one. And they did it before. History repeating itself. He said, you ain't got no business saying that in the pulpit. Oh yes, I have. It is the word of God. The stain of Abraham Lincoln, the one that freed you, laying yonder in the museum on a woman's dress. You sell your birthright. Shame on you. 
is talking to black people in America. And you people, for politics, because you are just a good Democrat, voted for something like that and sold your birthright of Americanism and Christianity to give it over to prostitutes that run us in this nation. Is it not corresponding with today? <laughs> that run us in what made us what we was? See, how she's been creeping in. He's talking about Catholic Church. That's what he's calling prostitute that run the nation. Joe Biden is Catholic. Abby? And there's a woman behind him now. So, real easy. Until now, she's on the throne. Sure, the White House throne. Watch already. Did you see the other day about the Catholic schools and Protestant schools? Support the Catholic school, but not the Protestants. See, oh brother, you watch for a wave of stuff coming forth. Now, notice, as they did it, look what's taking place. All this sin eating in. Got to a place and got the nation in that kind of staggering place. So brethren, watch out for things that are going to happen. 2021, they will open the floodgate of sin. Floodgate of sin and more things will happen. This is history repeating itself. And I think it will be mega. So we, should, we have been warned already. So when we see those things, we should not say, ah, 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 let's not wonder. It's already prophesied. Amen. Hallelujah. So we saw that John also, who was carrying the spirit of Elijah, huh? he was also silenced. Who silenced that? A divorcee. The same thing. These things keep repeating and repeating and repeating. So why, why did God allow that? John was beheaded on the order of a, an immoral woman. And God did not stop it. Sometimes you wonder, ah, ah, but we cannot question God. He said, the Bible told us we should not use our foolishness to question God. Because he is perfect. He has the whole plan in his hand. Our own, we are lucky. He said, Vessels, all manner of vessels are found in a big house. Abby? Yes, in your toilet. The ceramic shining. But can you use it to drink Gary? You can't. That's why the fact that it's, it can be very white and shiny. Because it's, it's not meant for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that we thank God today that we are vessels unto honor. That's what we should celebrate. Some people are out there fulfilling the other side of the scripture. You no doubt when this Pope was born, he was a fine little boy. They rejoiced over him. But yet, every succession of Paul is going to hell. So that was an hell bound child. But you are not like that. Let's appreciate God for placing us where we are. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So, it's paralleling. Elijah, Jezebel. Direct Elijah and then John the Baptist. And we have the prophet today. They silenced him too. Because his work was finished. Because he told us nothing can take you until you have served God's purpose. It can't happen. <laughs> Amen. It can never happen. Ha! Hallelujah. Oh, how we ought to trust this God. Ah, he says, son, give me your heart. That's all he requires. Surrender to me. Let me be the captain of your ship. And I will guide you right. Amen. Amen. Nothing in this world can overcome you. Somewhere in the in several church ages, he said there is a revelation that the devil is keeping away from the church. That if the church can know it, then they will become an invincible army. Invincible means something that cannot be overcome. Ha! Praise the Lord. We are here for such revelation. We know who God is. Quickly here, there is also that dragon. Bible told us that three unclean spirits came out of his mouth. They are like frog. And then, who are the people talking about it? He said his prophet, his false prophet, preachers, all of them. They are the one. And what is that three unclean frogs? Trinity. That's what unites white garment, blue garment, yellow garment, Catholic, um, Pentecost, all of them. 
Holy Trinity, which is not even written in the Bible at all. Bible calls it three unclean spirits. They are like frogs. That's what he's using to do the binding. So, brethren, don't you see yourself lucky? You are out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. These are things we sometimes need to emphasize. You know, oh, you say, oh, God has not been, oh, I need God. I need God. God, you, you already have Him. God already got you. You just don't get it. I've said it before. I said many times you have made decisions. You have taken steps. You have done every time you say, Oh God, God has not been speaking to me. Oh, who has been helping you make all these decisions? Do you think you are that smart? You think so? Somebody is behind you. There is a power behind you. You just don't get it. But we need to have that revelation. So that we can stand our ground. We can say, You serpent, get, in fr- get away from there. Oh, when it comes upon your child, you can look him in the face and say, Oh, Satan, I know you are hiding there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you out. You son, daughter, get up, come and eat. And it is so. Because you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. We said history repeats itself. And we have shown us who Nimrod is. And then how he relates to Elijah. Even Elijah of our time. I'm rounding it up quickly. So that I won't pass. I'm already passing my time. Let me not bring new things. So we have seen that there was a marriage of numerous religion and Christianity. And today we see it as Catholic Church. Now, the church, that Catholic Church is the beast. What council of churches? is the image to the beast. Now, there is a punishment for that beast. It's in Revelation 17. There is also, it was first proclaimed in Revelation 14, when God said, come and see the judgment of that all. Then it was actualized in Revelation 17. So all this effort, and what was it? It was blown to craters. I think a brother later told that, I think last Sunday, King of the North, Russia will do that job. When the time comes. He said, and everybody will wonder, Hey, is this her? Ah, they, they will pity her. They will mourn for her. But she will be no more. Because the Bible says, She has enjoyed too much. You know? They kill at will as you see them. There was a time I read reports, I think in pastor's room. I had one guy, who was trying to, he's a Catholic guy too. He's one of their staff. He, was trying, he saw some fraud. He was trying to expose it. You know, was writing about time. You know, all these audit people start asking question, question, question. The next thing, he was already dead. Now, how do you know it's a foul play? They said the man took a gun and shot himself, and the gun is still in his hand. How can somebody shot himself? Shebi is supposed to relax, but he was still holding gun. They knew that, ah, but they didn't allow any investigation. Everything closed. Because secrecy. So they kill at will. They do what they like. They have ambassador. Even though it's a nation within a nation. These things are so clear that the world should see it. But they have eyes. But they cannot see. The Bible, God told them, come. Let me anoint your eyes with eyes salve. So that but they say, no, we can see. We see 2020. So they can't see. Everything is clear. But they cannot see it. So, the idea, the Bible said because she has enjoyed, she has lived delicately. And so God will punish her too and will burn her with fire. That's physical. It, that Vatican will be blown away physically. And people who wonder after it, the mark and the image and everything is to hell. Today, we appreciate God that we are not part of that. We still have the grace, we stand in gap. People will know, we still pray for them. You know, God told us that when the last ship comes in, rapture will take place. So I believe there is still room for repentance. So, I, and you know, we cannot discountenance anybody who is still breathing. Oh, don't say this one. Mm, no, for him. No, only God owes the hope. Let's be hopeful. Let's pray along. And let's be faithful. On our part, let's claim our right. We have heritage. 
We have privilege. We should not live under privileged life. We, Barbara I'm saying, I attempt great things for God. And you should also ask great things from God. Don't say, ah, that's too much. For who? Is it for you or for the provider? That's nothing too much for God here. Yeah. Hallelujah. I like one song. He said, God, even it's in the Bible, I believe. He said, God, he humbled himself to look at the things in heaven. Are you getting it? He has to humble himself to see things in heaven. And that song person, he said, the, the God is so big, heaven cannot contain him. What did he do? He has to use earth as his uh, footstool. He said, earth is too small. He has to be sitting in heaven. That's the God with whom we have to dwell. Yeah. Brethren, let's be open. Let's ask him. And let's be prepared to serve him. Yeah. He said, son, daughter, give me your heart. That's our job. Let's surrender to him. When we are saying this, is surrender to the world. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Brethren, let's rise up. Let's talk to him. He said, what manner of man ought we to be? In all only conversation. Since we know all these things, we can see them. It's happening right in our face. We know it. They are true. We know they are true. It's established. Prophecies are coming to pass right in our front. Let's talk to God. God, help me. I want to be who I should be. Oh, I want to love you more than ever before. Since that's what you want. And to show your love, I will keep your commandments. Talk to God. Give me the grace. You have brought me this far. Ha! Take me to the end. Talk to him this hour.